Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, you all, for staying here. Maybe there is no bus to go to the airport, but uh, um, uh, a privilege and a pleasure always to be in Cybernet. Um, this is the 200th anniversary of the Checking Palsy, and, and it, it really remains a major challenge that uh, 200 years later uh, we still don't quite understand the origin of Parkinson's disease and certainly have not found uh, a way to make a dent into the disease, although high significant uh, um, um, advancements uh, have occurred in terms of uh, symptomatic therapy. So, uh, next. I'm pushing next here, but nothing happens. Another one in the back? It might just be the back. Anyway, while, while I get this going, um, I like to say that Movement Disorders is a great journal going up into what you all care, the impact factor and all these things. You're using your own computers. Oh, all right. So it's always my fault. <laughs> anyway, my, anyway, my ad is a great journal, and it took me a, a big effort to become the only solo editor. And people keep repeating his co-editor, co-editor all the time. So let's make sure I am the one to blame all the time. Dr. Jean Sumai uh, explained clearly yesterday that he thinks, like I think, and with Glenda Halliday, that uh, there is a dissociation between the neuronal loss, which is certainly first and most severe in the lateral nigra compactor and the levy body inclusion, although, of course, there has to be a reconciliation, as we know that uh, these levy uh, inclusions uh, do feature part of the pathology of PD. But I'm going to concentrate on neuronal loss. I'm just showing this slide because Dr. Sumaye expanded yesterday clearly, just to say that I'm, I'm aware of the BRAC and everything, but uh, I think neuronal loss, synaptic loss, is a critical factor here. So what I'm going to do here in the 17 minutes is to try to tell you what we think uh, about vulnerability of those neurons. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, the focal uh, uh, onset of, of such vulnerability, and perhaps uh, if, if we can envisage how to try to stop that. So the whole uh, approach that uh, my team is, is, is addressing is to try to define at the, light, at the highest detail the primary site of onset and the mechanism of, of the degeneration of the nigrostriatal system uh, in order to try to intervene at uh, stopping uh, such a, a, a deleterious uh, evolution. So the, it, it starts by just reminding that there is no single cause and no single explanation for why the wrong uh, are, are lost in PD. And, and this goes to somehow why, you know, in one of these, several of these apples uh, are, are healthy, while many others are spoiled uh, anywhere in the field. And so we are, we, we are taking a, a multi-disciplinary um, approach in order to try to understand this. Uh, I was happy to hear that 2020 uh, is, uh, is, is the day to come back here, and, and I hope to uh, come back with a lot of uh, explanations to what I'm only putting forward uh, today here. And I also like to say that uh, Champalino is, is a place where we are always happy to be because um, we already have a, a very uh, excellent and uh, ongoing collaboration with uh, Professor Rui Costa and his team, Joaquin, Marcelo, etc. So the important thing here to begin with is that uh, our behavior is modulated by two systems. The goal-directed system, which is when we are learning, we, we need to be conscious of some circumstances, changes like it's snowing, there has been an accident, etc. And the habitual system, which is what we use routinely in, in, in most of our daily life activities. The two are intermingled. We humans mix it all the time and switch back and forth, or even within a given uh, behavior, uh, we are actually using routines plus goal-directed. And that for, for the sake of the argument, the, the systems are separate, so the goal-directed is more rostral in the brain, 
uh, engage in prefrontal uh, areas and the anterior striatum, while the habitual system uh, is, is a little bit more caudal and is engaging mainly cortical motor areas, the posterior putamen and the lateral nigra. And the important uh, element of the hypothesis first is that uh, performing routines, this kind of automatic task, is mediated indeed by the habitual system, which means the motor circuit and the nigra striatal uh, lateral projection. And this uh, is, is needed in order to perform uh, what we do routinely, as I said, and while the goal directed. Now, if the two systems would work totally separate, uh, there should be no real need to think in terms of habitual versus goal directed. They could be totally separate in action. In the, uh, goal, the, the habitual system, the sensory motor, uh, Nigra and Putamen, here in this uh, scheme diagram from Susan Haber classic article, uh, these lateral Nigra neurons project to the posterior Putamen. And although this is not as as uh, simple as it's shown here, uh, there is some topography and segregation so that the from lateral is posterior and the more medial is the more rostral and then the VTA projecting to the accumbens and the limbic system. Now, the second critical point that for most people in the experimental world is not clear or is not aware or is not perfect, is not always present, but it's very obvious, is that in PD, early in PD, is these lateral neurons, the one which are especially vulnerable. This is a normal brain. This is also from Glenda Holiday. And this is the mesencephalon, the nigra, in a relatively early PD. Uh, not that early, because most, most of these patients don't die. But that this was a relatively short evolving uh, patient. So the nigra striatal degeneration is not or let's say in positive, has a selective pattern. It's not totally random and it's not a global, like the sick hydroxydopamine uh, uh, nigro, um, uh, rat model, for instance. And in fact, when one, one does in vivo and much early on studies, one can see that indeed uh, this is relatively focal here. Going very quickly and alluding to uh, Rick Ost and his teamwork, uh, uh, when, when a, an animal like this one does a, a, a sequence of events like this, it goes here, it goes here, uh, and eventually it learns the task uh, to really do it very efficiently and very quickly, and they record in the, uh, in the nigra uh, dopamine neurons and in the striatum, uh, neurons, it's shown that the beginning of the, uh, of the task, of the sequence, and the end of the task is signaled by this robust uh, activity in the nigra striatal uh, system. There are, there are a lot of data, I just cannot show you anything else, and of course this is fundamental to show here, uh, indicating that indeed the nigra striatal system is engaged in such, uh, in such uh, 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 patterns of activity. So, our, so the, the thing is, if it's so easy to do routines, which is what we humans do all the time and mix up all the time, what is specific to those neurons and the projection that makes them so vulnerable? Because for many, most of you who are not clinicians, there is no selective degeneration of the medial nigra. There is no selective degeneration of the VTA. Those diseases don't exist so far, so they don't exist. We never see a PET of S-DOPA uh, showing uh, medial, preferential medial uh, nigrostriatal uh, depletion. It's always lateral to begin with and posterior in the putamen. So the hypothesis is that when we involve the routine, the habitual system, like to do a simple task like moving, uh, running, or something that is well there, we do activate the uh, um, uh, motor circuit and the habitual system. When we do a little bit more complex, like taking decisions, like the chess player, or many other decisions which are more goal-directed, we, of course, go rostral. But we still engage the, the motor circuit because you still need to do something, and the nigra, lateral nigra is still Still has to be involved, and the same happened for a, an emotion. So the idea is that whichever we engage in, and particularly when doing something simultaneous or multitasking, uh, the lateral cells 
are active. And somebody alluded yesterday, I think it was again Jim Sumayan saying, you cannot afford in the jungle to be thinking and turning on your system to escape or fight if a lion or somebody comes for your food. So this is a system which is always ready. And of course, I'm not so naive to think that this is the explanation for vulnerability. We schematically represented here, you have low probability of developing PD, if you have very good genes, no bad genes, if you have no uh, negative environmental factors, you smoke, you are not exposed to herbicides, you take ibuprofen, uh, coffee, etc., and, and then you do very little, you don't overexpose your anigrostriatal system. On the other hand, if you have risk factors plus a overstressed nigrostriatal system, then the likelihood to develop PD is higher. So this is uh, what could be, could be tested, and what we, particularly with the mice, work here in Champalino and the monkey in Thinac uh, in Mostoles in Madrid uh, are uh, pursuing uh, right now. Now, essential to... Now, these lateral nigra neurons are focal, but not really focal, because PD begins even more focally, clinically. And many of you, my friends here, have seen this video repeatedly. But still, they will, well, I'm not going to be able, I can't see the, <laughs> this is so small that I can see the, well, I'm not going to lose time, waste time with the, uh, with the thing here, because it's so small. It's being shrunk so much. Well, he's much younger, so he may be able to see the arrow. But, uh, nah, okay, thanks very much. That's a real chair. And so this person, as you can see, is not uh, swinging the arm, the right arm. And he is not going to move right, the, the right shoulder uh, well. He has good facial expression. He's essentially otherwise normal, except for the, mocal, the focal motor features in the right shoulder. So we can almost say that his uh, PD motor features began clinically by the, by the shoulder. Whether or not there is a pattern for the clinical onset, uh, we don't know. It's not known. Most clinicians would say PD patients always begin by the right, uh, by, by the upper limb, but, but this is not uh, really that clear because the, the brain may be compensating. So the, the, the idea is, if I find the arrow here, it's gone now. Uh, the, the idea is that um, we have to define at the level of the putamen or the nigra where is the primary site of onset and if there is a hidden pattern. Um, and there are two possibilities. One is that the nigra itself is somatotopically arranged exactly like the sub subthalamic nucleus is, the GPI is, the putamen is. However, this, which could explain easily uh, why somebody begins by the, by the leg or the, or the upper limb or the face uh, is not known to be the case. There is no real data indicating that there is somatotopic arrangement in the nigra. Rather, the nigra striatal system is relatively diffuse within the topography. So the other possibility is that what the pathology actually begins as the putamen, as the motor putamen, because focal dopamine depletion in one of these somatotopically arranged areas could give rise to the beginning by the shoulder, by the hand, or by the, the lower limb. And again, so our real idea is to try to find out if that is the case, because that would tell us that the beginning, the very beginning of the primary of the process of the nigra striatal system could be here, for instance, at the dorsal motor putamen where the leg is or whatever. To do that, we do this f dopa pet uh, in very uh, recently diagnosed PD patients, and you can see that uh, if rostrally, this is very normal, while uh, caudally in the posterior putamen where the motor circuit is, this is clearly abnormal. So this is very focal. Uh, asymmetrical, almost limited to the uh, clinically affected side, dopamine depletion. Now, this has to be farther uh, down uh, to details, and one has to rec uh, reconstruct the somatotopic of the motor putamen and try to see if there is a, a specific pattern. For that, we do fMRI, 
And here is obviously the cortical somatotopic arrangement, easily, lower limb, upper limb phase. Uh, this is not that simple to see in the putamen, but you can see it here. The, upper limb, the lower limb is always dorsal to the upper limb, so we can really reconstruct the two. These are in normal volunteers, the PD is ongoing, and here we uh, um, overlap uh, the dopamine depletion in early PD evolution with the somatotopic uh, uh, distribution. And here we could say that in this particular case, the dorsal uh, motor pitamen corresponding to the lower limb is where depletion, dopamine depletion is highest. And therefore, we assume most likely is the beginning of the process at that, at that very site. So in order to Suppose that in 2020 I come back and say, yes, there is a pattern. 85% of PD patients do begin by the dorsal motor pitamen and by the lower limb, although my colleague neurology have, have, have missed that completely. But it's true, we can prove it to you now. So we know the beginning of the nigrostriatal degeneration. Not the whole disease, I, I realize that, but that, that's good enough. So what can we do now to stop it? There are two things we can do. One intervene focally there um, by several ways, uh, which I'll just summarize to you. But we could also, much just right now, today, we could um, try to restore the physiology of the, of the system in order to uh, stop all the compensatory mechanisms that we think are deleterious and may, spread, may help to spread the process and make it worse. And this can be done today with ultrasound, with focal ultrasound which is not exactly a surgical procedure because there is no blood, there is no incision, there is no real, but which manage to uh, uh, focally um, um, localize about 1,200 uh, ultrasound beams into a site stereotactically defined and uh, increase temperature focally uh, in order to produce, uh, like typical surgery used to be, a, a, an ablation there. And here I have the same problem, so I will need the chair help again. I'm going to be on time, uh, with your help, of course. And, and this is a, a relative, I mean, a young onset uh, PD patient, highly asymmetrical um, at baseline. Highly asymmetrical, this is a purpose, of course. This person perhaps was not severe enough to have unilateral surgery, uh, so he was thought a good candidate and he was receiving far too much uh, medication just for that uh, uh, body part. And here is, uh, is we uh, within the MR. This is baseline, and just for the sake of time, I will just show you when he's just coming out. The idea is that the affected side will be as good as the less affected or even better, which is the case. As you can see, the right side now is equal or even better than the left. And I'll skip the rest, you just believe me. This will come out hopefully in last neurology before the end of the year. So what we do, uh, then you can see here the impact uh, uh, along with time. After six months, the, uh, the lesion is really small. You can see it here for the 10 patients. And most importantly, from the imaging point of view, when we do um, uh, FTG, PET, in, in eight of those patients, you see a pattern whereby the, the lesion uh, restores the normality, reducing the hyperactivity of the primary motor cortex and the premotor area. Uh, this break, this uh, Parkinson's disease pattern, defined by Eidelberg, uh, is, uh, is significantly uh, improved, and in fact, there is a very nice correlation uh, between the uh, change in the pattern and the, and the lesion, and uh, more fancy these days, uh, the uh, uh, connectivity between the cortex and the subthalamic nucleus, of course, is drastic drastically uh, reduced by the impact of the lesion. So essentially, uh, the, the lesion restore uh, the circuitry of the corticostriatal thalamo or cortical loop, and this could be perhaps a way whereby uh, one could intervene. The other uh, fancy way to, do, uh, to apply uh, ultrasound is to do low-intensity focal ultrasound to open the blood-brain barrier, 
and enhance microglia activation, as it's been repeatedly shown in this meeting, for various protein aggregation processes, and also for delivering antibodies, like uh, synuclein antibodies or nanobodies. Uh, we are working in particular with a group in University of Los Andes in Chile for uh, developing uh, an animal-derived nanobody uh, to deliver focally. So the idea would be that because in 2019, before 2020, I know that it's here in the dorsal uh, motor pitamen where in 90% of the patients, nigrostriatal degeneration begins, we could go and impinge upon that side and stop uh, the rest of the uh, process, at least for, let's say, 7 to 10 years, which could be very much, uh, which, which could be good enough, in my opinion. And so the whole point is understanding the onset and progression of uh, nigra cell loss, this special vulnerability of these fancy neurons in the lateral nigra, that's what we are about, and this is part of the team always growing, and this is, of course, recognizing Rui and his team's fundamental uh, uh, contribution to the experimental uh, work. Thank you very much.